Hemp 101, total THC versus Delta 9 THC. Hey, I'm Morgan Davis. I'm a health and wellness attorney based in Raleigh, North Carolina. Let's talk about how to keep your business protected and thriving. I get into a lot of conversations about what standard is the standard, not just with law enforcement, but even with consumers and with manufacturers and retailers. There's a lot of confusion for everyone as to what standard it is, how we define hemp, when something is hemp, when it's not. So today we're gonna do a deep dive into what is total THC, what is Delta 9 THC, and how do the two exist in the same industry? Total THC is a standard by which we evaluate hemp that takes the Delta 9 THC concentration plus the THCA concentration times 0.877 equals a number, which is called the total THC concentration, or also known as the post-decarboxylation concentration. What are we trying to capture here? What we're trying to capture here is, as the plant degrades, what limit is it going to hit? The Delta 9 THC concentration is just taking the Delta 9 THC concentration in the product or plant at the time of testing. It's one cannabinoid, okay? The Delta 9 THC concentration is the federal standard under the Farm Bill. It is what defines hemp versus marijuana, period. It is also the standard in many states as what defines hemp versus marijuana. We don't look at any other number. However, when the Farm Bill was created, it said, hey, we're going to take hemp out of the Controlled Substances Act, and it's now an agricultural commodity, and therefore the USDA is responsible for regulating it. The USDA then in 2019 created an interim final rule, and then in 2021 created a final rule. And we can get into a lot of detail about what the rules say, but here's the bottom line. These rules together create the regulatory body under which USDA says hemp can be cultivated. So if you're gonna cultivate hemp, you have to do it within these regulations. Every state that has a hemp program had to adopt either the USDA program or have their program approved by the USDA. In everywhere, the total THC number, or the post-decarboxylation concentration, is what is used in a pre-harvest test, okay? So under the rules, it says, no more than 30 days from harvest, a cultivator must take a sample of their hemp crop and send it off for testing, and it must come at or under 0.3% total THC, all right? At which point, if it does, they can harvest it and then go on. The USDA does not regulate anything once it is pulled out of the ground. Once it is pulled out of the ground and is processed for any purpose after that, whether it's fiber, whether it's grain, whether it's hemp oil or concentrate or extract or biomass, whatever, whatever it may be, whether it then becomes a beverage or an edible or a pre-roll, Anything that is then comes into what is called the stream of commerce, basically it's a product for sale, the USDA's purview of it stops and the farm bill picks up or the state picks up depending on where you're selling it, okay? So we have the total THC number that exists prior to it being pulled out of the ground and then the Delta 9 number once it is out of the ground and is a commercial product for sale. Why do the two exist? Well, I like to make this comparison. Think about bananas. Bananas that you buy at the store, when you buy them, are often a little bit green and yellow. When they are picked from the tree that they come off of, they are pretty much green. Why? Because if we picked them when they were yellow, by the time they got to you, they would be brown and rotted. Why is that? because plants change. They are natural products and they biodegrade over time. 
Hemp is no different. It is not a static thing. The second you pull it out of the ground, and even if it's cured, it continues to change. What happens when it changes? The THCA breaks down, becomes delta-9 THC, and then the delta-9 THC breaks down and becomes CBN, okay? There are a few other stops along the way, but that's the major understanding of it. So what does that mean? That means as hemp degrades, it is going to peak at a delta-9 number, and then it's going to degrade into CBN. So the USDA, being smart agriculturers, people in agriculture, said we're gonna do a total THC number because otherwise no farmer is going to have, or cultivator is going to have a shot at having a product that is sellable in commerce. Because there's no, if we use the 0.3% Delta 9 number at the time prior to harvest, it will degrade and be too much above that number and be marijuana under federal law when it is sold into the stream of commerce. So basically they're saying we use total THC because it's a lower number than what the Delta 9 is at the time. So that when it's harvested, they have a shot at having a product that is legal under federal law and many states to be sold into the stream of commerce as hemp. What has unfortunately occurred is that the two of these have been explained to a lot of people as being apples and oranges, right? When in fact, they work harmoniously together as different testing limits based on the life of the plant. And it's unfortunate because the two existing standards get picked up by certain law enforcement, by certain DAs, by certain legislators, and also by those working in the industry as static numbers. I have had retailers say to me, well, you know, the total THC number is what I'm looking at. No, it's not, depending on your state. I've had law enforcement say to me, the total THC number is all the THCs. No, it's not, not anywhere. So now that you understand why the two exist, I wanted to talk about some common misconceptions. One, the one we just talked about, the total THC means all the THCs. No, total THC in under federal law, under USDA regulations, and in most states means THCA plus Delta 9, okay? Or Delta 9 plus THC times 0.877. It does not mean take every THC isomer that is found inside that plant and add it up. Now, there are some states that have adopted that rule, but the vast majority have adopted the USDA version. Second misconception, the pre-harvest COA means the product is legal forever no matter what. I've had wholesalers say this to me, manufacturers say this to me, retailers say this to me, that if they have a pre-harvest COA from the cultivator that says the product was in compliance then, then therefore nobody can ever say to them their product is illegal. That is not true. If your product goes over 0.3% Delta 9 THC at any point in its life, it is marijuana under federal law. If, it go, if you are in a total THC state and it goes over 0.3% total THC, it is illegal in your state. If it's, just a, if it's a Delta 9 state, then see my comment about federal law, right? That limitation applies always. So while your pre-harvest COA is helpful, it is not definitive, which is why many times I have told you guys, think about getting your own COAs when you're, especially when you're buying new products you don't have any exposure to before. Finally, that total THC is the federal standard and therefore can be enforced everywhere. Yes and no. Yes, it is the federal standard for hemp cultivators who are licensed by the USDA and, and or whose state program has adopted the USDA cultivation standard. It is not the federal standard for all hemp. After it's pulled out of the ground, it's the Delta 9 standard under federal law. And the idea that 
federal law can be enforced everywhere is also not true. States are allowed to have more restrictive standards than the federal standard, except for when it comes to interstate commerce. If a product is traveling from one state to another, and it travels from a Delta 9 state to a Delta 9 state, but it crosses through a total THC state, the total THC state, even though it has a lower standard, cannot seize that product in transit if it is truly in transit, right? If you stop and try and sell your product there, then you've subjected yourself to that jurisdiction. But if you're just driving your truck through the state, many courts have said, that's interstate commerce, you cannot seize that shipment because federal law is a Delta 9 standard. Helpful? Do you need more explanation? If so, don't worry because a lot of people are confused about this and it's not always easy to think about or even see sometimes. So if you need further explanation, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about your products, what standard they fall under, and how we can keep your business protected and thriving.